a city 170 kilometers long, 500 meters high and powered entirely by AI and renewables. No cars, no streets. Sounds like sci-fi? Welcome to The Line, Saudi Arabia's $500 billion mega project. But is it a vision of the future or just a desert illusion built on PR and power? Today, we break down the dream, the controversy, and the reality behind the world's most ambitious city. Subscribe now, because only by the end will you know, is the line real or a mirage? What is the line? The line is not just a building project, it's a reimagination of civilization. Proposed by Saudi Arabia as the centerpiece of its futuristic Neom development, the line is a linear smart city that will stretch 170 kilometers, or 106 miles, across the desert. It's only 200 meters wide, yet planned to house 9 million people, all within a mirrored vertical megastructure. The city is envisioned as zero carbon, car free, and entirely powered by renewable energy. Instead of traditional roads, the line will rely on AI controlled transport systems, ultra fast rail lines, and vertical mobility across different modules of city life living, working, recreation, and nature, stacked vertically like shelves. At the heart of the design is a five-minute city concept. Everything a resident needs, healthcare, schools, groceries, will be within a five-minute walk. No cars, no pollution, no sprawl, just seamless tech-driven urban efficiency. The line is part of Saudi Vision 2030, a plan to diversify the country's economy away from oil and reposition the kingdom as a global innovation hub. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman calls the line a civilizational revolution and a model for future cities that balance sustainability with ultra-high density living. The project is backed by an estimated $500 billion investment from the Saudi Sovereign Wealth Fund PIF. Construction has already begun, with drone footage showing massive excavation sites in the Tabuk region of northwestern Saudi Arabia. However, beyond the high-gloss renderings and official claims, very little of the actual structure is visible. Critics argue that the line may be more marketing than material, pointing to a lack of clear timelines, questionable engineering feasibility, and humanitarian concerns, especially regarding the forced displacement of local tribes. Still, the ambition is staggering. If successful, the line could challenge everything we know about how cities are built and how we live in them. If it fails, it may stand as the world's most expensive monument to overreach. The Vision – Sustainability or Surveillance On paper, the line promises to solve some of humanity's biggest challenges – urban sprawl, pollution, and unsustainable growth. Saudi Arabia claims it will be a carbon-neutral city, powered entirely by renewable energy, producing zero emissions, and with no need for cars. Buildings will be constructed using sustainable materials, and vertical farming will bring food production closer to residents. It's the ultimate eco-city fantasy, smart, efficient, and green. But beneath the sustainable veneer lines and growing debate, is the line a model for future living or a tech-driven surveillance city in disguise? At the core of its operation is a centralized AI system. It will manage everything – transport, energy use, water, health services, and even behavior patterns. Cameras, facial recognition, biometric sensors, and drone monitoring are expected to be standard. According to NEOM officials, this data-driven environment is meant to optimize urban life, but it also raises serious privacy concerns. Critics have called it a smart prison, a place where everything is monitored and personal freedom could be limited in the name of efficiency and control. In fact, leaked NEOM documents suggest plans for predictive behavior tracking, with AI flagging anomalies in how residents move or interact. Then there's the social engineering. The line proposes a radically dense lifestyle, 9 million people living shoulder to shoulder in a 200 meter wide corridor. This vertical arrangement could eliminate commute times, but it also compresses human life into a highly controlled space, where choice may be an illusion. Saudi Arabia argues that its vision is revolutionary, not dystopian. In their words, the world has grown unsustainably, and it's time for urban design to evolve. Supporters claim it's no more invasion than Google, Amazon, or Facebook, just with better infrastructure and actual regulation. But the question remains, can sustainability and surveillance coexist? Can a city be both efficient and free? The line may represent a clean future, but whether it's a better one depends entirely on who's watching and who's in control. Is the line actually being built? 
While the promotional videos for the line depict a sleek, mirror-finished sci-fi city stretching across the Saudi desert, the question remains, is it actually being built or is it mostly hype? Officially, construction is underway. Satellite images, drone footage, and government updates confirm that excavation work has begun along parts of the planned 170-kilometer route. Massive trenches have been carved into the desert near Tabuk, in the northwest of Saudi Arabia, and thousands of workers and machines are on site. The Saudi government has claimed that Phase 1 will be complete by 2030, housing 1.5 million residents. Initial infrastructure such as tunneling for the high-speed rail system and foundational support for the vertical structures has reportedly started. But many analysts remain skeptical. So far, no full-scale vertical segment has been completed or unveiled publicly. Much of the current construction appears to be early-stage groundwork and logistics hubs. Given the scale and complexity of the project, meeting the 2030 timeline seems extremely ambitious, if not unrealistic. Funding is another point of uncertainty. While the Public Investment Fund, or PIF, has committed hundreds of billions of dollars, actual investment from foreign partners has been limited. Multiple international firms have signed MOUs, Memorandums of Understanding, but few binding contracts have been reported. Major engineering firms have expressed concerns about feasibility, workforce safety, and the region's extreme climate. Then there are human rights controversies. Reports have emerged of forced evictions of local tribes, particularly the Hawitat people, to clear land for construction. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch have both raised alarms, accusing Niam authorities of using coercion to remove residents. These allegations have created backlash in media and among potential investors. To some, this undermines the credibility of the entire initiative. While progress is visible in some areas, others see the line as more concept than construction. An image campaign for a kingdom seeking to rebrand itself. Bottom line, yes, something is being built, but whether that something will resemble the shimmering utopia shown in marketing videos or fall short of expectations is still very much in question. The Global Message – Mega Project or Mega Mirage whether or not the line is completed as planned, its global impact is already being felt. Saudi Arabia has successfully positioned itself at the center of a global conversation around urban design, climate adaptation, and futuristic living. But as with any mega project, the question remains, is this bold vision inspiring the future or distracting from reality? On one hand, the line has sparked unprecedented attention toward alternative urban models. Planners, architects, and tech leaders around the world are studying its concepts. Zero-carbon infrastructure, hyper-dense living, AI-managed services, and walkable city cores. Even if the full project never materializes, these ideas are influencing real developments in places like Singapore, Dubai, and even Europe. Politically, it's also a branding tool for Saudi Arabia. As part of its Vision 2030 strategy, the line is designed to showcase a nation moving away from oil dependency and toward technological and cultural modernization. It reframes the global image of the kingdom, from conservative oil exporter to futuristic innovation hub. But critics argue that the project is a techno-utopian mirage, designed to mask deeper issues. While the country promotes green megacities, it continues to invest heavily in fossil fuel production. At the same time, the authoritarian nature of the state raises concerns about freedom, ethics, and who benefits from these urban experiments. Furthermore, some experts see the line not as a prototype for the future, but as a one-off PR exercise, something so expensive and extreme that it's unlikely to be replicated or scaled. Its very unrealistic scale, 170 kilometers of mirrored skyscrapers in the desert, makes it seem more like a monument to ambition over practicality. Still, there's no denying its influence. The line challenges the world to rethink urban norms, question existing infrastructure, and imagine how cities could be rebuilt from scratch. So is it a mega project or a mega mirage? Maybe it's both, a symbol of hope and hubris, a spark of innovation and a warning. The only certainty is that the line has forced the world to look at cities and the future in a completely new way, a future reimagined or a fantasy exposed. The line is more than a city, it's a statement. It challenges our understanding of urban life, sustainability and ambition. But while the vision is breathtaking, the execution remains uncertain. Is this the dawn of a new urban era or just a shimmering desert illusion powered by hype and oil money? What's clear is this, the line forces us to rethink what's possible and what's responsible. 
Subscribe now because the cities of tomorrow are being designed today, and not all of them will have a happy ending. Would you live in a mirrored city where AI watches your every move, but everything is five minutes away? The line could be the future, or a warning. Comment below, futuristic utopia or dystopian illusion? And don't forget to subscribe because in our next episode, we explore the real underground city being built beneath Europe. The world is changing fast, and the most radical cities may not even look like cities at all.